Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. We're here with a tactical analysis of the top of the table clash in Serie A between Juventus and Inter Milan. In a crucial game in the chase for the Scudetto, Juventus came away 2 0 winners thanks to Ramsey and Paolo Dybala. The XG also backed up the result. But what tactics did Sari and Antonio Conte use during this encounter? In this video, we take a look. A quick reminder of both teams' formations, as Sari chose to stick with his preferred 4 3 3. Antonio Conte, on the other hand, uses his preferred 3 5 2, as you can see on the One Football app, which is today's video sponsor. If you want match updates, formations, news, and more about your favorite team, check out One Football below for free. Juventus had the majority of the ball, so let's start with how they look to play in possession. Like every Sari team, they look to play out from the back, starting with Chesney. When he had the ball, Juve would build with two centre backs and the full backs pushed higher into the wide spaces. Inter, on the other hand, were looking to press high during this phase, with Lukaku and Martinez on each centre back, while Sprozovic was high on Betancourt. With limited options, Chesney would then look to play into the fullbacks. The importance of the Juventus fullbacks is shown by them completing the most passes for the team. Because Juventus' front three started wide, the inter wingbacks were often pinned back and would join the press slightly late, giving the Juventus fullbacks space to pass. When the Juventus wingbacks did press, they left space behind them. Through quick passing in the midfield, Juventus could then release a forward into this space, dragging the wide centre-back out of position and looking to attack him. But Juventus's wide central midfielders in Ramsey and Matuidi are very industrious and when higher up the pitch, they could look to repeat this pattern. The wing-back presses Juventus's full-back and it is Juventus's midfielder who makes the run into the wide region which is vacated and looks for the cut-back pass. Juventus used this pattern on both sides and created chances in this manner. This is also how Ramsey's goal comes about, as the same principle applies higher up the pitch, as Candrea presses and Matuidi makes the run in behind and pulls it back for the goal. Dybala's goal is mostly down to his skill, but we still see the principle of attacking this space behind the Inter Milan wingbacks. From deep, when Inter still pressed in the 5-3-2, Juventus had to create a numerical advantage by dropping one of the fullbacks to create a 3 versus 2. This was usually Quadrado dropping deep and to the right, which made sense, because Ronaldo cuts in from the left, so Sandro has to provide the width. Costa tends to stick wide on the right, so even when Quadrado did venture up the pitch, he was in the inside channel with Costa on the touchline. Here we come to another problem which Inter faced. When Juventus had the ball in this three, Inter's forwards and midfielders pressed, but with Juventus's forwards staying high, the Inter defenders could not join the press, thus leaving a gap here between midfield and defence. Ronaldo often dropped away from his marker, received the ball and could then turn and dribble towards the back four, whilst the other forwards made runs into the wider regions and they repeated this pattern on a few occasions, although no goals came of this. But how did Inter play in response to this? They too looked to play out from the back in their 3-5-2, and Juventus pushed high but didn't necessarily press frantically. Their front three positioned themselves quite narrow to focus on the centre-backs, and so did the midfield. This meant that Inter usually had the flanks free, but Juventus were okay doing this as Matuidi and Ramsey had a high work rate, sprinting across to cover when the ball did go wide. Inter Milan's wide midfielders on the build-up often stayed fairly wide in their respective half-spaces. But if they built in their usual shape, Ramsey and Matuidi could easily cover them. So in the second half especially, the wide centre-backs were given the permission to join the midfield when they could break the press with the ball. This drew Juventus' midfielder, freeing Inter's wide central midfielder to push higher up and occupy the full-back. The Inter wing-back would then be free and could be found to attempt the cross. This was a pattern repeated on both sides and Inter looked to overload the box during this phase for the cross. 
Juventus would often try shift into a 4-4-2 to combat this, with Costa dropping in and Matuidi going into left midfield. But this preference from Inter of using their central midfielders to facilitate wide play meant that Inter often couldn't get controlled passes into Lukaku and Martinez, leading to them not being highly involved or getting any good shot opportunities. Juventus will be happy with the win, but there is still work to do to secure the Scudetto. But how do you think Serie A's top 3 will look come the end of the season? Drop it down in the comments below. Check out some other videos at the end of this one. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.